Singapore has named its first female president, Halima Yaqub. A popular public figure, Mrs. Halima was widely expected to win the presidential election, but instead will begin her term amid controversy. So why are Singaporeans not happy to get the president many wanted? For starters, there hasn't been and won't be an election, she just got the job in a walkover because there were no other eligible candidates. Singaporeans are used to predictable elections, with the same party winning every parliamentary poll in the carefully managed country's 52-year history, last time with a landslide. It's partly due to loyalty to the ruling People's Action Party, PAP, but also because the government tightly controls the media and political freedoms. As the head of state, the president plays a largely ceremonial role and doesn't hold much power, apart from having some say in the use of Singapore's hefty financial reserves. Still, many were looking forward to exercising their vote this time round, and were angry to hear on Monday that Mrs. Halima was the only candidate. There were two other possible candidates in the running, businessmen Saleh American and Farid Khan. But a government-appointed committee decided they were not eligible as their companies didn't have at least $500 million, £280 million, £370 million, in shareholders' equity, a rule that was recently tightened by the government. Mrs. Halima doesn't qualify under that rule either, but she made the cut because she used to be Speaker in Singapore's Parliament and those who've held certain public office positions can qualify for the presidency. It has led some to joke online that the president has been selected, not elected. Others vented on social media using the hashtag NotMyPresident hashtag used in the U.S. after Donald Trump won the election there. Mrs. Halima, who is Muslim, is only the second president to come from the Malay ethnic minority. It's a move that should be celebrated by Singapore which prides itself on its multiculturalism and diversity. But instead, this has fired up one of the biggest controversies of the presidency. That's because this election was only open to Malay candidates, the first time the government has reserved an election for a particular race. The government, which lauds its careful maintenance of national racial harmony, argued it was necessary to ensure minorities could have a chance at becoming president in Chinese-majority Singapore which has always had an ethnically Chinese prime minister. But some Malays saw the move as positive discrimination that went against Singapore's golden rule of meritocracy, which is that the best person gets the job, regardless of background. It also stirred up questions about Malay racial purity, after people realized Mrs. Halima was half Indian, and many have mocked her ethnicity. The irony is that Singapore's government has often clamped down on such discussion, fearing it would hurt racial harmony. Racial questions are popping up. Yet the G government cannot tamp this down because it had opened the can of worms in the first place, wrote political commentator Bertha Henson. Now, the discussion is described as mature when, in other instances, it would have been slapped down as being inimical to social order. While some Singaporeans are delighted to see Mrs. Halima in office, others are unhappy at what they say is overt manipulation of the process by the government. Some believe the government deliberately took measures to block former presidential candidate Tan Cheng Bok, who came very close to defeating the government's man at the last election and who wanted to contest again. One view is that the government did not trust voters to choose their candidate this time round, despite the fact that it was Mrs. Halima, a former union leader who had broad appeal and was aided by extensive and favorable coverage in Singapore's state-friendly media. Singaporeans have always known that our politicians consider themselves superior beings, said writer Sudhir Thomas Vadekath. Now, with this reserved presidency, we have irrefutable proof about just how stupid they think we are. The government recently acknowledged the outrage by noting that the changes to the presidency might cost them political capital but argued it did what it had to do for the future of the country. But some wonder if it has cost the country more. The risk of we, the people, denying Halima her mandate was probably too great for the PAP, wrote poet Alfian Sant. And thus they would much rather deny us the right to confer her with a mandate. No matter how much cynicism and loss of trust it breeds towards our political systems. Singaporeans now have mixed feelings about their new president. Some like the commentator Ms. Henson, feel she is the only good thing in the whole episode and argue she is still a decent person with a good heart, 
but others have accused her of complicity. Mrs. Halima, meanwhile, has largely sidestepped questions about the controversy. She told reporters earlier this week, I promise to do the best that I can to serve the people of Singapore, and that doesn't change whether there is an election or no election. What do you think about this news? Scroll down and comment. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe. Goodbye and see you again.